Hello, I'm Waffles Are Better. In this video, I will be showing you how to upgrade your World Generation data pack from 1.17 to 1.18. As you can see behind me, uh, I am in the 1.17 version of the Frost, and I need to upgrade it to 1.18 to be able to use it in the future. However, before you upgrade your pack, there are some things to keep in mind. For instance, having structures of any kind in custom biomes, or adding any custom structures at all, to any biomes is no longer supported in 1.18, so you might want to wait to update your pack until they add custom structures back. And another thing that I'd like to say before I start this video, I will not be talking about how to update configured features in this video, just to keep it shorter, because those have gotten really complicated, but I will have a video on that soon. And one more thing before we start, I don't mention this later in the video, but just to make sure that uh, any features or biomes or anything that you use in your data pack have the updated names. Some of the default features and biomes and stuff have had their names changed, so just make sure that you look out for that. So the first thing that you're going to want to do, assuming you are using the Data Pack Helper Plus extension for Visual Studio Code, which I highly recommend using as it helps you find errors, is click on extensions right here and then click on the settings for uh, data back helper plus and then click on extension settings then you're going to want to change 1.17 to 1.18 and then you're going to want to scroll down and change it to 1.18 here as well so that uh, at the top that's data pack command version and then down here is data pack json version and I believe that's everything that you're going to need to do. So that should be saved. If I then go back here, um, I can change pack.mc meta to the pack format of 8, which is what you're going to need to do for 1.18 to tell the game that your data pack is not outdated anymore. So now let me get into some of the changes in 1.18. I'm going to be looking at the noise settings first, so let me go ahead and open up the noise settings file. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go just uh, somewhere at the top, just because that's probably the best place to add it, and you're going to want to type in legacy underscore random underscore source. And this is going to be either true or false, and this just determines how the game chooses to actually generate the world so legacy random source if that is true it will use the old random source generation and if it is false it will use the new one so the new one is probably what you're going to want so you're going to want to put false because you don't want to use the old random source and so the next change is that this deep slate enabled section has been deleted so just make sure to get rid of the deep slate underscore enabled parameter because that is no longer a thing in 1.18 because that is controlled by other factors. The next change that you're going to want to make is to go down to the noise section in your noise settings file and inside of there you're going to want to put some quotation marks and then put terrain underscore shaper uh, and then some curly brackets and inside of there, you're going to want to put factor and then a colon. And for that, I'll leave this as 0.0, .0 for now. And then offset. And I'll leave this as 0.0, .0 for now as well. And then you're going to want to put jaggedness. And I will also leave this one as 0.0. .0. And then, of course, remember that after this curly bracket, you're going to need a comma. So I'm pretty sure that in terrain shaper, factor is the same as density factor and offset is the same as density offset, and then jaggedness is just how spiky the terrain is gonna end up being. So this stuff can all get super, super complicated, and you're probably going to want to make it super, super complicated for your dimension to look the way you want it to look. And I will go into terrain shapers in a later video because there is a ton of stuff um, that you're going to need to change in there. So since Terrain Shaper just controls all of the actual physical generation of your world, and that isn't controlled by biomes anymore, this section is just going to contain a lot of information. So let me show you what that looks like. But first I'm going to go ahead and change factor to my density factor value and density offset to my, or an offset to my density offset value, and then delete both density factor and density offset 
because those aren't used anymore, and neither is random density offset or simplex surface noise. So this here is the um, the new overworld file. Let me just show you the terrain shaper. Uh, so if I go ahead and close the terrain shaper, you'll see that everything down here is basically normal. It's going to be the same as it was before. However, if I open up the terrain shaper, you're going to see how incredibly long this section is. Just look at this. This is all inside of the terrain shaper. Um, and it goes all the way down to here. It is about 2,600 lines of code. So that's a bit ridiculous. It's got different terrain for different parts of the world, for instance. So I believe uh, this kind of stuff is saying that it will have different offset based off what the value is on the noise map. But I will go into that, as I said, in a future video. One more thing that I thought I should maybe point out is now that if I look into this overworld file, uh, you can see that the default minimum Y and height have been changed. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in the frost. That will be negative uh, 64 for the minimum Y because uh, the world will now go down to level negative 64. Then if I go back to the overworld, you can see the height is now 384. And so I will change the height to 384 as well. The next thing that I'm going to do is in my dimension file. Um, so what they have done is changed altitude has been deleted. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And it said there is um, erosion. And I'll leave that as 0, 0.0 for now until I change it. And depth. And I will also leave this at 0.0. .0. And continentalness. And that is also going to be 0, 0.0. Oops, I forgot a comma up there. That's the problem there. So if I go ahead and copy all of these values into each one, make sure you delete altitude and replace it with these three. So now I'm just going to figure out which uh, which of these values each of these should have. I'm going to go ahead into the um, 1.18 vanilla world gen files. I'm going to go to dimension, then I'm going to open overworld. And inside of overworld, I'm just going to search for, let's see, um, let's say frozen river. So frozen underscore river, and let's see what that comes up with. Well, there's actually going to be several values here. Um, but as you can see, um, each of these has a range, so you can do that just by adding a square bracket and then another square bracket and then just having the minimum and maximum being like say 0, 0.0 and 1.0. For the frozen river, it looks like continentalness is this, so I might as well paste that in here. Uh, then depth is 1.0. And let's see, where's erosion? Erosion will be this. So basically this means there are six different noise maps instead of four to actually decide where the biomes are going to be placed. And in the overworld file, there is a crazy amount of lines. Let me see. Okay, so the default overworld file has, um, yeah, 204,625 lines in it. So this can get really complicated if you want it to generate similarly to the overworld. Um, but I'm just going to make it as not complicated as possible. I guess I'll make this something like negative 0.7 and I'll make this one something like negative 0.15 or something. And so I'm just going to do that for every one of these biomes. So I have got here some values that I think are pretty good. Keep in mind that you should keep de depth at around zero if it is just a normal biome. And then I believe at about positive one if it's like a river or an ocean. And then continentalness is just um, whether it's part of a continent or part of an ocean. I think I'm not really sure um, it probably doesn't really matter because again it's just noise maps and now onto the bio biome file because everything is done in the dimension for now I believe 
Um, so into my icy waste biome. There is no longer any depth or scale value. Those have been removed because they're controlled by the noise settings now of the dimension that they are in. Surface builders have also been moved into the noise settings, but I will get to that in a minute. Most of this is going to be the same. Uh, player spawn friendly has also been removed. And one thing that is really annoying that will hopefully be changed in the future is that the starts category has been removed as well, which means that you won't be getting any custom structures or really any structures in custom biomes at the moment, but I am sure that they're planning on changing that in a re later release and I will make a video about how to fix that when that comes out. One other thing is that they have added a new category and that is going to be axolotls and that is what defines how axolotls spawn. It's also a new feature array. So that is going to be the third from last, so you're going to need to add another array. So there's going to be a total of 11, and this one now is for lava and water springs. They have been moved out of the second from last. So yeah, just make sure you have a total of 11. There's also been a lot of changes to features, and I am not going to be going over those in this video. Just to keep it shorter, because there are a lot of changes I have to cover, but I will be going over those soon in a part two of this video. So the last thing that you're going to need to add inside of your noise settings file is going to be surface rule. And so just, uh, I'm going to put it right above structures and it needs to be surface underscore rule in some curly brackets. You're then going to need to put type and this is going to be Minecraft sequence sure to put a comma oh and then you're also going to need to make sure to put a comma after surface rule and so then inside of here you're then going to next put in quotation marks sequence and then some square brackets so these surface rules can get super super complicated so let me just show you the overworld surface rule um, if I click to expand you can see that this entire list is the surface rule for the overworld so going back up um, the surface rule is basically 1,880 lines. So that's, um, a very, very, very large amount of lines. So, um, I go over surface rules in a second video that I also posted today, I believe. So look for that. It'll be linked in an iCard at the top right. Uh, I'm not going to go over what everything does because it gets super complicated. So instead, I've created a paste bin that's going to have all the stuff that you're going to need. So if you go ahead and look in the description of this video, you're going to see a link that is titled Paste Bin for Bedrock Floor Surface Rule. So you're just going to want to copy everything in there and go ahead and paste it into here, assuming you want a bedrock floor. So once you have pasted in the bedrock ceiling, you can minimize it and you'll see that in your sequence, you just have these two curly brackets and then inside of there is a condition that changes the bottom four blocks of your world into a gradient of bedrock, just like the overworld. And this is actually the one that the overworld uses. And if your dimension has a bedrock roof, you're going to need to go to the bedrock roof surface rule pasteman and copy all of this. Here, let me just get all of that and then go um, back here. You're going to probably want to minimize the sequence for the bedrock floor and paste in here uh, the bedrock roof sequence. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this, but make sure that you keep it if you actually uh, do want to have a bedrock roof in your dimension. So the next thing that you can do uh, is go to the default deep slate surface rule link and this is just going to add deep slate to your dimension. So you can go ahead and copy this and then paste that after the bedrock rule if you want. And then lastly, to actually add the stuff that you would have originally had in a surface builder, you're going to just go ahead and copy all of this for the top material surface rule and then paste that after any other rules you have in here. What this is going to do is just add a top block to a specific biome in your dimension. So uh, as you can see here, the biome that is currently used is ice spikes. So find ice spikes and change this to whatever biome you want. 
and then change the result state to whatever block provider you want. So for me, that's snow block, but if you want it to be a grass block, you can go ahead and type in grass underscore block. And again, a mistake that lots of people make, you are then definitely going to need a properties section and in there, you're going to need it to specify any properties that the block has if it does have properties. So for example, uh, you're going to need to put snowy is false for grass blocks because that's a property that they have. So if you want to add any other top blocks, what you can then do is just copy this whole section here, uh, I believe up to there, and then add a comma after it and paste it, and then just change this to your next biome and this to your next block. So once you're done with that, you can go ahead and minimize that section. So then after that, you can add a comma, and then if you want to do an under material, like in the old surface builder file, let me see, uh, right here, where there's an under material, you can go ahead and go back here and um, copy everything in the under material surface rule. And this is actually exactly the same as the top material, except that add surface depth and add secondary surface depth should both be true. So I can go ahead and copy all of this and then paste it right here. But anyways, this will be exactly the same. Uh, you can change the biome, you can change the block, and then you can go ahead and copy this whole section and paste it again like that. So if you go ahead and do this for every single um, biome that you have in your dimension, it might uh, help to go into the default overworld file and check the surface rule for the overworld, although that's really complicated. This is just how you go ahead and update how your configured surface builder works. And so then you can go ahead and actually delete the configured surface builder file because those aren't used anymore. That's it for this video. If you have any questions about anything that I covered in this video, or if you have any suggestions for future videos, you can let me know in the comments, or you can join my Discord server and talk to me there. Remember that I am planning on making a second video to teach you how to upgrade custom features, and that's when I'll be adding the icebergs back to my biome, hopefully. But until then, you can use this video to at least mostly update your pack to 1.18. And also, thank you guys so much for 675 subscribers. Just... It really means a lot to me, and thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.